What exactly is divinity? It's my life is a feeling. I get a blow on the head like I had this uh, car accident. I was paralyzed without any consciousness. A week I was. Afterwards I started a bit to come out of it and different imaginary pictures uh, till this picture was stabilized before me which is also imaginary but it was stabilized before me. Spirituality it means that I after what is envisioned in me now from my five senses and this picture that I now see and feel I start feeling behind this picture a higher picture forces and the one upper force that stabilized this picture for me. I start feeling in a relatively in a relative way that I live and some kind of an imagination. Imagination. That whatever is envisioned in me, hearing, vision, smell, taste, touch and these senses, my impression from these senses, this is what is depicted in me. This is a table. This is how I feel it. If I would have had different qualities, I would have feel, felt something completely different. What? Don't know, because I don't have other qualities. And therefore, we have to navigate ourselves, aim ourselves at the real perception of the world, not according to the bod our bodily senses, not according to our bodily senses, but according to a sense above the body. If I want to reach eternal life, it's forbidden for me to accept vision through, uh, to accept the picture of this world through vision, hearing, seeing, touch. It's forbidden because this body dies, the picture disappears. Can you reach a state? that you perceive a picture not through these five senses, through something which does not die? Yes. What is it? It's called the soul. I have to develop the so-called sixth sense. It doesn't matter how you call it. An additional sense that does not depend on the body. That does not depend on the body. And if through it, whatever I perceive, it, uh, it's mine. It stays mine even though the body dies. Therefore, the Torah brings us eternal life. Oh, how does it have to do with the Torah? The Torah, meaning the light in it, reforms, meaning that we correct our ego. It navigates all of these senses, my five bodily senses. According to my ego, I constantly see, hear, feel. And as a result, I see the picture of this world. If I transcend my ego there, I start building the sense of bestowal and not reception. And then it turns out that with the help of bestowal, with the help of the this ten in direction, with the help of bestowal, I exit the body and I feel outside of what my says me. Wait a second, let's go step by step. The ego is the director in this story? Yes, okay. And the ego has five senses that together put a picture for me, that together give me this picture. I myself have five senses behind them. Stands an ego that perceives through these five senses different things that are good or bad for it in order for, let's say, um, be careful of harmful things and the good and pleasant thing for my ego. Uh, compose my um, picture of reality. If now I exchange my ego. Exchange by what? Bestow love for others. The opposite. In a different attitude towards reality, people, anything. I do not perceive in myself the picture envisioned in me through these five openings. But I come out and I perceive reality the way it is outside of me. And the perception of reality outside of me is called the spiritual world, the upper world, the spiritual world. But what about the five senses? They're working or what? They continue to work. They don't stand in my way, but this is an addition. Parallel. Parallel, yes. But then I use them uh, necessarily in order to exist. 
So you have two planes, two pictures. Yes, as if you've opened an additional uh, um, screen. You uh, turned on another television. What do you see on it? You see the forces that work, and these forces are forces of bestowal, and you discover them to the extent to which you want to be like them in bestowal. And all these forces, they connect together, and there's harmony between them, and the life that you discover, it's an endless, infinite light. It's a life outside of you. It's uh, limitless on your behalf, and then you feel that you enter some kind of eternal process. All in all, this thing is called divinity that we talked about previously. And behind this picture that uh, is depicted to you as spiritual, there is one force holding, sustaining this picture called the Creator. He is this uh, secondary uh, director. No, he is, he is the director for both televisions, for both channels, yes. Then you start seeing uh, one television, the one picture, and through it the other picture. Second channel. Uh, say, I'd say 66. What does it mean? Are they tied, the pictures? They're tied. How? Because one and the second from that upper channel come down forces and activate the lower channel. Let's say on the lower channel, we know the pictures get up in the morning, get married, go to work, children, mortgage, etc. Then you'll start seeing the director and how he directs everything and arranges everything and operates everything. Say, what's the final scene if there is a director here? The final scene is that the director brings us to a state where all is one. All is one. You see this world and the forces and him and yourself that all is some kind of a one big great eternal infinite harmony unlimited by time space or anything else it's not our universe or world or somewhere in the clouds angels with wings it's the world of the harmony of forces that work in order to create in a person the feeling an eternal and complete whole feeling this and this is what we have to discover here now in this world each and every one and in our generation this is the first generation that in general the people of this generation around the whole world were worthy of it